Now, thought is like a training of the Bodhisattva way of life. So there's a, a general training Bodhisattva way of life, and then a particular training of Bodhisattva way of life. So there's two things. So first we do general training of the Bodhisattva way of life. It's like an uh, uh, everyday life. Uh, try to help others as much as you could. And then every day, try to not to harm, protect, no, stop harming others as much as you can. Yeah? Stop harming others and help me as much as you could. That's the general training of the Bodhisattva. That Bodhisattva way of life means like uh, always helping others, stopping harming others. That's the Bodhisattva way of life. Like I said, business way of life means like uh, you always uh, go out and um, do the business. That's business, business uh, way of life. You know? So we all have a different way of life. So both sorts of way of life means like uh, really every day is helping others and stop harming others. That's a general practice of both sorts of way of life. Uh, think about usually I go out, I not control my emotion, I easily say things or easily express things or easily think about negative. That's the mind nature. You have to recognize. First, you have to aware your own quality. From then, you have to work. So now I have to, as a Buddhist practitioner, as a minor practitioner, I have to be more cautious myself. So how to cautious, like a, uh, when I go out, somebody kind of make me upset, immediately you have to remember. Like a, one, my, also my lead teacher, Kimba Perimbaje says, like a, uh, normally, uh, when we go out, someone try to upset you, instantly when we see this person or we hear this person, we get upset. That's normal how we respond. But the, when you're training, uh, Buddhist uh, mind training, these people are actually helping you rather than harming you. Even whatever the intention, intention they harm to you or not, but if you have a mind training, when these people try to harm you, that moment, it's to help you to recognize your mind, how reaction comes. Because without that person, your negative mind is like a, almost like a hiding under the, your layers of thoughts. So the moment you see this person, this thought comes up. So in that way, this person helping you to recognize your own thought. So someone helping you, now, when, as a result of training, whenever who are upset, immediately you get happy, then you're upset. So that's how we call the mind training. So if you have that kind of mind training uh, practice, then nothing can upset you. Even though they think they are making you upset, for you it's a, everything is a blessing. Make sense or not? Mm -hmm. So that's the power of the mind training. Now onward, you only see, happy to see the negative rather than uh, be upset with them. Yeah? So this we call the general training of the Bodhisattva way of life. There are so many kind of uh, talk about the very detail. Uh, <clears throat> so we not just go through so much, I think that's uh, Now, second is a particular training Bodhisattva way of life. It's like, uh, uh, there's two things. In order to ripen in oneself, uh, one need to practice six parameters. In order to ripen in others, we need to practice four social gatherings, yeah, so, so social gathering practice. The so first, like, uh, in order to wrap in oneself, this is a man practice the Bodhisattva. Man practice the Bodhisattva daily practice. Man daily practice is like uh, six perfections. Generosity, uh, ethic, uh, patience, uh, joyful effort, Patience, yeah, and then uh, contemplation, and the last one is wisdom. Yeah, these six are the daily uh, practice of the Bodhisattva. So when we say generosity, there's the three types of generosity is important. Uh, first one, let's uh, say, uh, without as a set, with the renunciation and bodhicitta. Just normal, warm heart, yeah. Give someone to something, 
that's we call the worldly generosity. And then second is like a, a based on the renunciation, you do the dana, Theravada called the dana. So give, reason you give it, prime, actually giving is helping other, prime reason is like a, to uh, myself to attain enlightenment, self liberation. This is a, a Theravada point of view of generosity. The Mahayana is like a, we call the perfection of generosity. It's a different than the first two. So how it makes the perfect? You need to do three things, like a, the right motivation, the right action, and the right dedication, three things. Three things makes your generosity is a perfect. So first, like a motivation is like a, when you give, your motivation is I'm giving this sake of uh, attend Buddhahood, like a sake of, for the uh, attend Buddhahood sake of sentient beings. You need to bodhicitta motivation when you give motivation. Then actual object when you give, you need to understand of emptiness. How to understand is like a, at this stage when we give, we have a triple grasping, not just one grasping. We have a triple grasping. So what's the triple grasping is like a first thing. I'm the giver. That type of grasping to yourself. Second person who receiving from you is like a receiver grasping that. You think this is a recipient from me. Um, this person received from me, grasping on that. Third is an object the grasping. This is my object I'm giving. You have a three grasping. Yeah? So the, out of this grasping is a virtuous uh, generosity, but it's not going to be the perfection generosity. Uh, the virtuous generosity and the perfection generosity is the two different things. Yeah? Perfection generosity means like a we need to give with the, the absolute realization, like a, the absolute state, I'm as a giver, it's just mere perception, really it's not exist that way. A person who receiving also just perception, absolute that there's no such call the receivance. And absolute the object also not exist to such a give. So with this emptiness understanding, then you have to give. That's the sec second, the main part. And then third is dedication. So whatever I gain merit out of this giving become cause to attend Buddhahood. So when you have all these three, the bodhicitta motivation, understand of emptiness, and then dedicate to attend Buddhahood, that makes the perfection generosity. Yeah? So these are, we talk about the, the uh, well, generosity, there's a two, like we call the positive generosity, and negative generosity. These are we call the positive. Within the positive, then there's three. Yeah, mundane, and then the super mundane, and Mahayana generosity, three. And then Im impure generosity. Impure generosity means like a, a giving alcohol, toxication, like a, giving a packet of cigarettes to someone, or giving kind of weapon to someone, giving something that's harmful to someone. These are, it's a giving, but it's impure giving, you know? So first we need to train to stop giving something that is harmful to others. We make a, the right giving. Within the right giving, we need to train to give the best one, the Mahayana perspective of giving, the profession of giving. Make sense? So in this way, like now, uh, Pendi that says, Sage's intent, there is a, ordained person's generosity and lay person's or householder's generosity. That's two different types of things. So ordained person, like a monk or nun, monk or nun, uh, these people should not so much emphasize material give to others. Because if you so much uh, like a, become like a material charitable organization, then because the man, the ordained person, concentration is a study, Contemplation, meditation, that's the main job. If you're so much caught up with this charitable, you're distracted. So, because if you're distracted, then you eventually lose the real essence of the Dharma. Yeah? So, this is not the prime job of the ordained person. So, householder, because live an ordinary life, 
So their prime job is like a giving material things to whoever needs. Yeah. So what the ordained person should practice generosity is like a dharma. Yeah. Dharma is a more like ordained monk or nun's job. You should give whoever you think is a benefit, but don't give anything that out of ego. They always says like a uh, for giving when you're giving dharma, what kind of qualification of the teacher. And when you're receiving dharma, what kind of qualification you requirement to receive dharma? It's not to, uh, no, need to know both sides of qualification is important. For teacher's point of view, uh, there's so many talk about qualification. At least they talk about three things. First one is there's like a very humble nature. The teacher must have a very humble nature. That's one requirement. Second, teacher who giving teaching must himself or herself receive this teaching from his or her own teachers. Without the teaching received from the teacher, there's no lineage, you can't qualify. And then you must have a really knowledge of what you're giving teaching. Not just to make things up, you know. You must really hurt and study and you have a pure confidence. That's the second one. Third, when you give the teaching, I'm really giving this teaching to this person really to help that person. Nothing else reason. So at least you need to this three quality teach, to be a teacher, to t give teaching to others. And then student requirement is like a, uh, I'm receiving this teaching in order to remove my delusion mind. I'm receiving this teaching in, as kind of a receiving prescription to purify my sickness. That's the reason I'm receiving teaching. So that kind of more like a, you have to think as I'm as a uh, patient of the doctor. That manner, you, if you have that kind of manner, then you have a right reason to receive the teaching from the teacher. Instead of that, I'm thinking I'm uh, uh, kind of a challenge to the teacher, or I'm kind of the I can challenge other fellow Dharma students. Then it's the wrong kind of a motivation to receive teaching. Yeah. So this reason, both you need to be, if you have both the right kind of what we call the condition, then it really it's an independent nature. It can really benefit. Teacher can benefit the student. Student can also benefit from the teacher. That's how it works. Yeah. So this is what we call the generosity. Uh, so of course we talk about there's so many types of generosity. We talk about loving kindness, generosity, dharma, generosity and the fearlessness, generosity, there's so many variety of generosity, we don't need to go through all this, just prime like a uh, uh, dharma or material givings. So this is uh, uh, first generosity. So when we say generosity, most of us we think like a material that you're giving, think that material is the generosity. The Buddhist says like okay, all the six perfection to do with the mind. You, from your mind make decision say, I'm going to give. That decision is a generosity. Not the actual object giving is not generous. Your mind. Yeah? When we talk about mind point of view. So this is a, uh, like a, what we call the, the both sort of way of life. Like a, when I was in India, uh, sometimes I would travel with my lead teacher in the town. He always take lots of coin in his hand. You know? So he takes with lots of Indian coin. Then when he goes in the street, any beggar comes, he never kind of stop. He gives, doesn't matter what amount, he just gives a little bit to them. Never judge, you know. People think, oh, if I give this one, then he can use drugs. If I give this one, he can uh, secret. Like, uh, if you don't need to give like uh, enough money to buy them to drugs or not, just a few five cents is okay. You just five cents, that doesn't make, but you need to be keep Bosadwa commitment. Just give five cents, that's not going to make life change the person. But you just a training of your mind, just give you five cents. Whatever they use, their choice. But I just, because they ask me whether they like or don't like, I just give five cents. So that's the kind of very good training of the mind. Yeah? 